In this video, I'm going to show you the transport in Reaper. Now, when we open Reaper for the first time, it's probably going to look a lot like this. With the track control panel over here, the arrange window or the timeline over here, the transport over here, and down over here is our mixer. Now, if we want to hide the mixer, we can go up here to the view menu and choose mixer, and the mixer goes away. And to get it back, just choose it again right here, and it comes back. Or we can use the keyboard shortcut. On PC, it's Control M, and on Mac, it's Command M. Hit that keyboard shortcut, and the mixer is hidden. Hit it again, and it's shown. Now, if we double click in the track control panel, it creates new tracks. Just double click for each one we want. And notice we see our tracks in the track control panel and also in the mixer, making it easier to adjust our faders or the level of each track with a fader. But we could also do it over here with knobs. So if the mixer is hidden, we can still adjust the volume of our tracks right over here. Now we could also float our mixer by going down over here and grabbing this tab and dragging it up here and letting go. And now our mixer is in a separate window, also known as floating. So we can grab it and drag it to any place we want or even move it to a second monitor. But if you prefer to dock it again, we can right click over here, dock mixer in docker, and it goes back down here, docked on the bottom of our screen. Now right above it is our transport. If this gets hidden, we can go to the view menu and get it back over here by choosing transport. And it shows back up right here. And we could hide it the same way. Just choose the transport again, and it's hidden. And we could also use a keyboard shortcut to toggle it. Alt Control T on the PC, or Option Command T on the Mac to show or hide it with a keyboard shortcut. So if you want to see it again, hit that keyboard shortcut, and it shows up. If you want to hide it, hit the keyboard shortcut again to hide it. So let's go through what we can do with the transport. Right over here is our play button. So obviously, if we hit it, the transport plays. Hit it again, and it starts again from the beginning of the song, or where our cursor was. Keep hitting it to start it over, or hit stop to stop the transport. And it goes back to where the play cursor started, which we can move to different places. Hit play, and it plays from there. Hit play again, and it replays from there. Or hit stop to stop it. Now by default, if we create a time selection, let's drag from bar three to bar four and play it by hitting the space bar. It's gonna loop this section over and over again based on our time selection. If we don't want that, just turn this button off. And now it's just gonna play through it and stop at the end without looping. But by default, this is on. So when it plays to a time selection, it's gonna loop that section. We can clear the time selection by dragging it away. Or we could hit the escape key to clear the time selection. Then we have the record button. If we put our track into record and hit the record button, it starts to record our track, or audio, or MIDI, or whatever we chose. Hit stop, and it stops recording. Hit undo to get rid of it. Now we could also loop our recording. If we create a time selection, go into record, and now it's gonna record multiple passes by looping. And if we hit stop, we could see those multiple passes that got recorded that we can choose from later. 
Let's start it right in bar two and create a looped recording. And now we have those takes to choose from while loop recording. Now right over here, we could choose to move our cursor to the beginning or to the end of our project. So we could jump to the beginning or the ending right here. And if we create markers in our project by typing M, go back to the beginning, we could right click over here and choose use transport home and end for markers. So now we could jump to each marker, marker one, two, three, and four using these buttons. Go back and forward as long as we right click and choose this option. But this option is off by default. So these buttons go to the beginning of our project or the end. Now we can change our recording modes by right clicking the record button. Right click. Right now we're in normal. We could also use time selection auto punch. So if we create a time selection from bar two to three and put our cursor right here, it's only going to record this section right here, not before and after. So it punches in and punches out. at the end of the time section. Create another one over here, put our cursor here, and it's gonna punch in on bar four and punch out at bar five. So it just punched in based on the time selection. But we could also use record mode, auto punch selected items. If we choose this, now it's gonna punch in based on the items we select. Let's create some fake ones like this, and then select them by lassoing them like this. Now, if we go into record, it's gonna punch in and out just for these items, not before or after the items. Punches in, punches out, punches in, and punches out again. So just recorded in these sections. And that's record mode, auto punch selected items. But by default, it's set to record mode normal. So it's only gonna punch in when we hit the record button manually. So if we hit play and hit record, we wanna punch in, hit record again to punch out, hit it again to punch in, and again to punch out. And that's manually punching in and punching out, which is the default recording mode or record mode normal. Then we have the stop button and the pause button. So if we hit play, place our cursor, hit pause, it stops right at that point where we hit it, hit it again, and it keeps playing from there, which is useful for jumping around your song without having to move manually the edit cursor. Just pause and unpause playback. And then we're done, hit stop. Now, right over here, we can see our ruler time unit. Right now, it's set to bars and beats and minutes and seconds. So if we hit play, we can see the bars and beats and the time. But we can change that by right-clicking, going down here, and changing it to minutes and seconds, seconds, samples, hours, minutes, and frames, and absolute frames. And we get a secondary time unit over here. Again, minutes and seconds, seconds, samples, and frames. Here's the main ruler, and here's the secondary ruler. Again, if we hit play, we see them moving, and we can see where our play cursor is. Then over here, we can see what our transport is doing. Right now it's stopped, but if we hit play, we see it's playing. If we hit record, we see it's recording, hit stop or pause, and see that it's paused. So we always know what our transport is doing. Then over here, we can see our info about our time selections. So if I select from bar two to bar three, we can see 
I select a bar two to bar three, and the length is one bar. But we could also type in different values. So if I wanted to select from bar three to bar five, that selection is created, and we could see it's two bars long. Or we could change it to four bars and get a four bar selection. So we can adjust it here. We'll just use it to see what we selected. Then over here, we could choose the beats per minute, which is the tempo of our song. We could type in a different tempo, like 90. Now our song is 90 beats per minute. Or instead of typing it in, we could also tap the tempo. Just tap our mouse button to a tempo we want it to be, and it changes to that tempo we typed in. And over here, we could change the time signature. It defaults to 4 4, but we could change it to anything we want. Maybe 3 4 or 6 8, but it defaults to 4 4. Then right over here, we have our global automation mode. By default, we could set our automation modes for our tracks on a track by track basis. So we can go over here to the envelope button and change the automation modes over here. We have trim read, read, touch, latch, latch preview, and write. And we could do it on a track by track basis in here. Change it for track two over here or track three over here. But we could override the track by track selection right down here. We could change them all to write mode. Now all the tracks are in write mode. We'll change it back to trim read or touch or turn off the global mode and override it. And then it goes back to each track being selected individually. And then finally over here, we have the rate. That decides how fast our song plays back. Now it's different than the tempo, as it's more like a vary speed on a tape deck. So let's import some audio. Let's bring in this guitar and drop it. Now this guitar is in the project. If we want to change how fast it plays back, change the rate, make it slower or faster. But notice when the rate is not set to its default, it turns green, letting us know it's changed. So if your track sounds weird, take a look down here, make sure it's not moved. You can always double click to put it back to normal or right click and set it to 1.0 and it goes back to normal. And we can also change it by semitones. Right click, decrease it by one semitone, or another, which could make it easier to play along with a song, just change the key you play it in. Just slow it down to make it easier to play, and put it back when you're done. We can also type in the rate over here, change it to 0.8 or 1.2, or double click it to put it back to normal. And if you find a rate that you like, make it a bit slower, and you want to change the tempo to match it, you can right click the button and apply the play rate to the current BPM. So change the tempo based on the rate you chose. So again, this is the transport. We could hide it right here or show it again right here if you lose it. Or use the keyboard shortcut, Alt Control T on the PC, Option Command T on the Mac to hide it or show it when you need it. And again, the mixer is Control M on the PC or Command M on the Mac to hide it or to show it when you want. So that's pretty much it. That's the transport in Reaper. 
Hope you learned something. Hope you could use it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys. Let's go. Oh!